Madison. Oh, I know who this is. This is the girl who got hired off the back of her PC build with Linus. Alright, because the community loved her. Uh, she kept saying oof. Uh, God knows if I'll find that video. Let's see if I Google that. Yes, it was. I've seen, I remember this video. So the community absolutely to love this It girl. hopes that one day I will build such an army of followers that I can look in the mirror and call myself real cool. One day you'll get there. If you just, if you just believe. Sorry to email you back <laughs> about the job that you applied for. That's okay. Right. okay I applied yeah, for a different one. And she, wanted, she wanted a job at LTT for years and then she got a PC built for her with Linus. Yeah, I, I, I do know who this is. Uh, yeah, the community absolutely adored her, and she got a job with them. Uh, but then she disappeared. Okay, so that's the context of who this is. Uh, to stop the speculation DMs I am receiving, I chose to quit my role at LTT because it and the working environment I was facing were ruining my mental health. The number of daily items the social media role at the time was expected to fill was incredibly high. I was expected to post three tweets, two Instagram posts, and two TikToks minimum per day, I was also expected to plan, film, edit, and post two float plane exclusives per week. This included wrangling people to be in them when they were also all struggling to get their work done. Okay, so this is um, this is clearly based on a unknown idea of how complicated it is to actually do three tweets and two Instagram posts and two TikToks a minute per day. I think on the face of it, that sounds like a, an hour long job. Right, that's what it sounds like, but it's not. Like every single day, you've got to come up with something new, something interesting. You can't just post shit. You've got to come up with something all the fucking time. Yeah, it's like, oh, well, all you're doing is sending out three tweets. Like I could do that in two minutes. Like what's the problem? <clears throat> uh, but the reality is very, very fucking different uh, to make it so it's worthwhile reading. Because if you start just posting nonsense, everyone ignores the fuck out of it. Uh, I was also expected to manage plan and come up with execute get approval for and schedule out all sponsored content on socials not including YouTube uh, All while being told not to complain because my job was the fun job. Yeah, exactly what we just said yeah, Exactly. I <laughs> I could tell you like uh, from our side nups and Bex handle this uh, Ours is really really light uh, compared to what LTT deals with with sponsored streams. But I, what I can tell you is that uh, I believe, and uh, I'm sorry if I get this wrong, that Yasmin of Echo deals with this during the Race to World First, and it's all the time. It's constant. The, the, the level of deliverables, especially when you're running, what, 12 sponsors, is a lot uh, when they're asking for it uh, without annoying your Twitter followers, right? Like, how many people follow me on Twitter? Uh, 90,000 people, right? So 90,000 people follow me on Twitter. Uh, and so, like, annoying 90,000 people with constant sponsor ads is detrimental to your community, right? <laughs> it's detrimental. Like, people are just like, what the fuck? Like, you're just, like, selling us all the time. So you've got, you've got to be careful with that shit. You mean X? I do. I mean X. This is what me and uh, Chris Wilson and his partner and... Grinding gear came up with this is X, right? Quinn should be doing it as well. I got Quinn in the X X gang. <laughs> We're X gang. Uh, I cannot speak of what it's like now, but they have an entire team working on seemingly what I was expected to accomplish alone. Okay, so she got given a job they thought was like giga easy, and now there's a team working on it. Yeah, that makes sense. I misspoke originally when I stated I had signed an NDA. I thought the employee handbook acted as one. I'm not a lawyer. Okay. I never publicly made any statements regarding my time there because I feared even more backlash from a community that was already attacking. Going against a popular streamer is always a risk. Defaming and sending me death threats. Yep. I also feared for my future in this career given that LTT is large and has industry connections. Yeah, it's a real thing. It's, it's a very sadly real thing, but uh, I mean, we saw it. We see it all the time, right? Speaking out against uh, a popular person. Uh, often leads their fans to just arbitrarily defend that person. I, you, factfully, you guys usually call me out on my shit. Thanks very much. You guys bully me all day anyway, but yeah. Echo Chamber's not particularly welcome. 
Uh, my time at the company brought my mental health to an all-time low. Uh, you could talk to anyone who was around me during my employment and they would confirm it. I would not have recommended anyone I know to work there. Oh, that's rough. Especially with my experience as a woman in the office. Oh, no. I'm having blizzard PTSD. Is that where we're going? I'm having ble blizzard PTSD. I was constantly belittled by certain members of upper management. They didn't think your job was important. I can guarantee it. My work was called dog shit and I was called incompetent. Jesus Christ. When I would reach out to managers and try to get help with these situations, I was told to put my big girl pants on and be more assertive. I mean, there's some credit to that sometimes, but like if people are just ignoring the fuck out of you, that's no good. It doesn't matter if you think I am or not stupid. This behavior is not appropriate. After enough complaints from me, I was pulled into a meeting. Oh, no. In that meeting, the writer's room was pointed to and I asked, and I was asked, do you think any of these people will have a hard time getting a job? I said no. Keep in mind, this was about a month into working there. I was then pointed to and asked, what about you? What the fuck is that? What? What? What, we're employing you as like a favor? Because you're shit at your job? You're garbage? What other way to read that is there? It's because you're fucking shit? Well, I believe, I mean, I followed LTT for a while. I believe Linus's wife is HR. <laughs> we play an outside HR company. <laughs> uh, I don't think Emma would actually be HR. <laughs> I don't think that works. I was scared. I remember asking, are you going to fire me? I was laughed at and told to stop being so pessimistic after this line as if my job ability hadn't just been vaguely threatened. I was then asked to agree to a verbal no drama contract. The verbal part is important. In this moment, I realized I was no longer considered part of the team. I was now a threat because I was putting up a fuss when I believed I was being treated unfairly and inappropriately. This verbal agreement wasn't right. It was behind the scenes warning with no record. A warning that came very shortly after I had come forward stating I had been inappropriately grabbed multiple times in the office, amongst other issues. Who the fuck are these people that are just grabbing people? What's going on? Where did you learn this behavior? I was barred from being in videos. So when you ask what happened, why wasn't she more content? This is why. There is the perplexing fear that people will leave LTT and start their own thing if given a platform. So if that platform could threaten negative things coming out about your company or you, you'd probably want to squash it too. In my experience, there is a belief that everything you accomplish, no matter how much it is created by your own effort, is actually due to Linus giving you a platform. This is what I was told when I moved from Arizona to Vancouver to take this job. It does happen. Like, I can't say, like, we're nowhere near the scale, but I can't say we haven't had this conversation multiple times internally. And it's generally down to, like, how awesome you guys are. Is we've had people like Finn, Fingal, uh, and even Chris to an extent who start streaming and... Usually you guys are super awesome and like throw a ton of subscriptions at them and all that kind of stuff. And it, there is a difficulty there in like, okay, you've given me like, you've given me that attention from your stream and now I'm making maybe a decent living or a livable living just doing my own thing uh, based on that. And you lose people that way. We haven't had that issue, thankfully. Um, none of the people we've worked with have been so like narcissistic as that i guess um but yeah it's a thing that you have to deal with in some way i'll be honest we haven't come up with a solution despite us i think me and the team have talked about it for maybe like five hours at total of like what is the solution here do we 
I, I never want to stop people from streaming, but like, do we not host them? Yeah, we host them. Why wouldn't we host our friends? Uh, is it any different than me hosting Novel or someone like that? Like, what what's the difference? You know, like it's uh, it's a conversation that can happen, uh, and we haven't got a solution. But thankfully, the people I work with aren't, aren't assholes or anything. Not that that would ever not come up at some point. Uh, in my experience, there is a belief that everything accomplishes because of Linus. Okay. <clears throat> After it was publicly announced by Linus that he was hiring me, without my knowledge or consent to the situation. And also, she, what, she, I was, uh, he was hiring me without my knowledge or consent to that situation. And also before I was even offered the job or shown the salary, I agreed and signed the employment contract. What? <laughs> I had asked and been told during my interviews that I would be allowed to monetize my YouTube channel and be allowed to join Floatplane in exchange for shutting down Patreon. Once I moved, I was presented with an entirely new contract and handbook that I was not told existed. It detailed that I was given incorrect information. And would actually have to make changes to my plans if I wanted to be continually employed by LTT. So I wonder if in their handbook they've made it so that if you work for LTT you can't monetize content. Is that their rule? Unless they get a cut maybe? Are they asking for a cut? This was after I had moved entire countries and given up my visa status. I couldn't just go home again. Some corrections were made as apologies for the miscommunication, but I was still upset. I later went to Linus about this and stated that the effort to remediate the situation wasn't sitting right with me. He told me perhaps I should change my priorities. He was in this instance referring to the fact that my brother had suddenly passed away not even a week before I moved for this job and that perhaps I should just ignore that uh, I had been misled because that was more important. I cannot tell you how upset I felt in this moment. So his response was, don't worry about this. Was he saying, don't worry about this right now? Like you, you're grieving or whatever. Was was he trying to be nice and it just came across completely wrong? Or was he deflecting? Yeah, I'm not sure if that was like, it, it, that's what it reads that way. It reads that way to me is perhaps... Because I don't think Linus is a bad person. Like, I don't think that's the case. Uh, but we'll see as this goes on. Uh, is he saying, like, oh, don't worry about that. We'll sort it. Like, you've got this to deal with right now. Focus on that and we will get this thing sorted. Like, is he saying something like that? But it's just like, this is not why I'm talking to you. You're not listening to me. Something like that. That's what I'm getting from that. Is because I, I mean, I've got to be honest. I might say something like that. It's like, don't worry, we'll get that sorted. But you've got this going on. Please focus on that, and we'll we'll get you squared away at some point. I might say something like that. Obviously, no intention of ever upsetting somebody. Like I understand it's important, but like a death of a brother is like huge. You need to deal with that. Um, it makes me, this this kind of stuff really makes me second guess everything I say to my staff. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a second guess. It. Like, okay, let's think about this a second. Am I going to like really upset somebody here? But I'm like trying to be nice, uh, and I do fully intend to sort you out. But like, like you know, fo please focus on this. Uh... <sighs> the opportunities LTT presented to me were nothing in comparison to the day-to-day -day issues I faced. It did not matter if I spoke to someone with evidence of an abuse of power or inappropriate workplace behavior, it was considered tattletailing. I was actually called a tattletale. I was told I was bossy when I was trying to be assertive, like I was asked to do. I was told I was arguing when I was trying to discuss my point of view. I was told to calm my tits, stop being such a bitch. Can't say that. Or other comments to similar effects. Stop being such a bitch? Jesus. There were numerous instances of misinformation being given to me purposefully to negatively impact my work. I only knew this because co-workers would tell me they overheard the actual information I should be given. What? 
at what point are you purposely telling somebody the wrong information for their job like who wins there what's the benefit are you threatened by the social media person what work from home was a whole issue if you took three minutes to answer a personal email you could get in trouble happened to me but what if he's making pancakes look i i have two duchies on my team and they're always on pancake break am i to shout at them for being on pancake break is that what i was supposed to do <laughs> to roast them for being on pancake break <laughs> like at this point when our office flooded my whole team works from home am i supposed to shout at them because they're on pancake break you are dutch bex so you're a qualified dutchie uh oh my mouse has died hello hello there we go <clears throat> uh okay <clears throat> i remember getting told off for taking my sick days as in the days you're entitled to this no days off grind set culminated in the real moment i realized i had to leave i purposely cut my leg open so badly i would have to go to the er to get it stapled back together what in the fuck am I reading? Nom, nom. What in the actual fuck am I reading? You started self-harming? Oh my god. What in the actual titty fucking Christ is going on here? I feel a little better. I had to kick my team out of team meetings because they were on holiday. <laughs> the rat bastards wouldn't leave the call. <laughs> it's like you're get the fuck out <laughs> you know get out of here i had to kick them out yeah i did <laughs> see vexel back me up i had to kick them the fuck out they were like it's just a team meeting i can listen in i'm like no you're on holiday get the fuck away it's also to, in a selfish way it's also to protect myself right i can't have the team working when they're supposed to be on holiday like they're not on holiday anymore and that's a fucking problem like that's a legal problem you're on holiday go away <laughs> I was genuinely the only uh, it was genuinely the only way in my mind to take a day off without being harassed for a reason why I had spoken to managers. Why would you harass people for taking days off when they what? How I was struggling and how the workload was too much for one person, but I was belittled and told you just have bi bad time management skills There are so many instances that led to that moment Some of them I've replayed over and over asking myself. What did I do wrong? How could I have changed the situation? But I don't think I could have I was not treated fairly, and in the moment, uh, I couldn't see that because I was told I was the problem by people I had looked up to for years. I had co-workers come to me saying, I didn't like how you were treated. Glad you got out. Only then did I realize it wasn't me. Yeah, this sounds to me like a combination of lots of things happening at once. One, that the management truly believed that her job was dog shit easy, and she may have also kind of been hired in a sort of mascot-y way because the community loved her from her PC build video. Uh, and so they, they might have, like, in a really egotistical way, thought they were, like, throwing her a bone and giving her a really simple job of making tweets and TikToks. Um as a, a, a qualified zoomer so to speak uh which is what came across in this video is like she was super young um and maybe not worked in like a professional environment before and then just loading her with like five people's full worth of work she's got no experience to remotely manage what is an already an unmanageable amount of work leading to untold amounts of stress and difficulty like you can almost see the timeline forming itself of what happens here you get hired as a result this this position you get fucking <laughs> you get lambasted with stuff uh, and then it goes completely downhill and just continues to snowball from there i haven't shared any of this besides with my closest friends and family because i couldn't at the time uh take any more hits to my mental health i couldn't deal with how small and worthless the job had made me feel all to push out some mediocre shit posts exactly like ultimately i'm like suffering with massive stress and my job is to push out like twatty tweets <laughs> tiktoks and instagram posts i'm still scared shitless of what the response will be since i'm a woman and i've already been called dramatic i'm not stating what happened to me because i'm seeking clouts i'm stating it because it's been eating away at me for two years uh oh my god there are genuinely amazing compassionate and incredibly intelligent people who work at this company and are driven to share this cool tech they love 
It sucks that ego and the bottom line are slowly destroying some of them and hurting their entire reputation at the company. I don't know what to say anything for fear of hurting those people by their employment, but at this point, I'm hurting myself keeping all this in while also being constantly bombarded with questions about LTT and jokes made at my expense. Uh, I looked for another job and finally got one. I don't know what had happened if I started applying elsewhere. Oh, man. <sighs> oh, we got some bot spam. Uh, cool. Uh, Chris will crack on with it. <clears throat> The, the, the fight will uh, go out. Beep, boop, 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 boop. Uh, shields! 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 Uh, there's more? What do you mean? There's more? How is there more, really? I look for another job. Show under replies. Oh, God. I've been patient and tried to ignore these comments, but some of you don't understand the mental anguish and nights of crying, feeling like I did something wrong and ruined my life that I've had to go through. This was my dream job. I was at my dream job, and they spoke to me like I was nothing. I can't express to you how worthless I felt. They seem to hire young people who don't know any better for some roles, and they get away with this over and over. This wasn't just my dream job. It is a dream job. There are so many more stories of horrible things and shows of ego that I witnessed while working there. But I just needed to get out at least some of what I experienced because it has been two years and every day I see people speculate is another day I'm forced to feel small. Uh, also meant to add, yes, that glass door review was me. It was me at the time. The only way I felt I could safely express anything that had happened. Since any time I had previously tried, I was crucified by fans for sticking up for what they loved. The things, that, uh, the things said by Linus about talking to management and HR and promises about how things are handled internally were a gross mis misrepresentation of what actually goes on behind those doors. I remember he posted this <clears throat> in response to people speculating something wrong had happened to me. And if you read it, it pretty much says, ha ha, no one has come out against us, therefore we have done no wrong. Uh, replied to by Linus Tech. For obvious reasons, there won't be an official statement disclosing private details about my dealings with any of our current or former staff. You and Reddit can stop asking. On a separate note, no. No NDA or other agreement can prevent a Canadian from reporting workplace mistreatment, including, but not limited to, harassment, discrimination, or unlawful termination. They can post it publicly, submit a statement to the authorities, or do both for good measure. As long as it was true, it wouldn't be defamatory. If I'm ever actually accused of a crime or other misdemeanor, including any violation of employment law, I'm sure you'll be able to read about it on Dexerto. For now, it appears that we are in the clear. Hmm. So people were suspecting that she'd been abused in some way or harassed in some way. And his reply was, well, nobody's reported anything, so go fuck yourself. The glass door review. Disappointed with treatment would not recommend. A social media coordinator. Uh, former employee more than one year. Pros. A lot of talented people. Employee bonding activities. This was from 2022. Cons. No proper or explained HR system. Sexist remarks. Coded language and harassment were commonplace. Inappropriate actions. Comments and discussions frequently occurred. Including discussion about employees' bodies appearance clothes and wealth upper middle management frequently misused power no way to report most incidents without issue since the htar team was also upper management feedback was constant consistently harsh and not constructive inappropriate language was commonly used while giving feedback meetings with unbalanced power dynamics were commonplace gaslighting situations frequently occurred unbiased third parties were never present or easily able to be requested in those meetings Lack of proper communication between management and employees. Outside ventures frequently frowned upon or limited by the company. Advice to management. Stop dismissing complaints because everyone is friends here. It's a workplace, not a group hangout session. Get a proper HR team and take reports of harassment and inappropriate conduct seriously. Don't dismiss employee complaints. Hot damn, man. The fucking snowball keeps rolling. Jesus Christ. When I read this, I was fuming with upset because what a dick thing to post when you were at least partially aware of the treatment your employees were getting from your higher-ups. But I don't know what I expected from someone who would mock others for not knowing who they were. 
I was asked about my sexual history, my boyfriend's sexual history, and how I liked to fuck. I, I just, I can't, man. I can't, like, process this. Why would you even want to know that? Like, what, what, what do you want to know that for? Like, what the fuck is going on? I, I don't understand. I was told that certain issues were sexual tension and I should just take the co-worker out on a coffee date to ease it out. What? What what does that mean? Ease it out? I was asked to twerk for a co-worker at one point. I was told I was chunky, fat, ugly, stupid. I was called retarded. I was called a hard F. And at any point I would bring up these comments, I would get told, oh, we'll have a chat with them. Nothing ever came with it. (sighs) The day I handed in my notice was when someone who constantly overstepped me misled what I was working on and he always said to me, I think the reason you try to be funny is because you lack any other skills, smiled, then walked away. I quit 15 minutes later. (laughs) What is happening in this? What? It hurts. I mean, we have to take it on faith, but God damn. It hurts when people compare where I am now to where I was then because yes, I had a bigger audience. Yes, I made more. Oh, your Twitch views have gone down. Therefore, you fucking suck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, You're just doing it for attention. But I didn't know if I wanted to even exist if the person I'd look up to could treat me and other people I respected like pawns. It sucks because that was what I had worked for for years. I had tried to get noticed by this big company and this big cool guy I respected. Because of that, I was willing to get a shit on for the job, yelled at and degraded. I was also the one tasked with managing the OnlyFans account. Something I said I did not want to do. They have an OnlyFans account? Why? Is it funny? It's supposed to be funny? I had to read comments from people talking about how they wanted to fuck me and my co-workers. I saw people's dicks and vaginas. Yeah, but it's still OnlyFans. Even if you do it as a joke, like, it's still OnlyFans. Right? And people on there are doing... Are there for a very specific reason. And she's a girl. Uh, And I hate it, but it is... What happens, unfortunately, with these fucking weirdos is if they believe they're directly talking to a girl online that they fetishized, then they're gonna start sending fucking dog shit. And it's awful. And it's always what fucking happens. And the amount of people... And I'm not gonna mention names here, who have a significant following... Who have shared with me some of the shit that they get sent. And it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Like how fucking degenerate some of these messages are. And like we might look at it and laugh. At least some of them did. But still it's relentless. It's always. It's every day. Never stops. Uh, If you want to say that. uh, If you want to say I'm just hopping on a bandwagon. That's fine. It doesn't take away the very real experiences I had or that sharing these without current events would have gotten me persecuted for attacking a company. Most of you until a few days ago thought was perfect. They also forced me to have them as my representation if I wanted to take any sponsors for my Twitch or YouTube channels. Originally, I'd been told just make sure you okay things by us for non-compete issues. Then that changed when I moved to take this job. To be clear, this meant I couldn't seek any companies to represent me for brands and sponsorships. Something important for making a living on Twitch or YouTube. But LTT also wasn't doing this for me. They were just going to take any traffic I gained myself, make a deal, and take a cut. (laughs) Can I have a management company get me brand sponsorships? No. So are you going to cut me in when you get brand sponsorships? No, but we are going to take some of the money because clearly you wouldn't have an audience if it wasn't for us. <laughs> like if you're part of a Twitch team or like a company that has widespread thing, that's that's how sponsorships work is you sell combined traffic and everybody gets a piece of the pie. 
but it's up to the management company to seek out those sponsorships not to like do the individual ones <laughs> what the fuck is that <clears throat> i understand it from a non-compete standpoint but uh like that's just managing an ongoing situation but you can't just like t <laughs> i eventually got all the money back that they would have taken when i called out that their calculations for the cut they were taking should uh should have been taking were being made before any sort of supplies were reimbursed they're taking from the raw oh no they're taking from the gross <sighs> even though in the contracts there was a set aside amount for supplies yeah they're taking from the gross I'm still angry at, angry that for a year I was being forced to sit under them while they weren't doing anything a company would do to really represent you. This was why we left uh, TGN on YouTube. They took... Uh, they were my first YouTube management company. And when you signed up, you got uh, the ability to monetize your videos when you uploaded because you didn't used to be able to do that. Uh, and they would get sponsorships for you. And they would get a cut of that. That makes sense. They were going to manage it uh tgn was an mcn yes it was the one that like if i think it still exists in some respects but it was a canadian company it had towerly under it uh i think they might have got bought by polaris like a lot of the mcns got bought up um when mcns were still kind of a major major thing uh but i never received a single sponsorship deal from them although they started running certain ads uh on them <laughs> they started running certain ads i hope see i'm still relevant in today's youtube world uh we still work with curse uh but it is a deal that nups wants to get rid of um because we haven't seen anything from curse in a while uh it used to be uh what used to happen which was probably like six years ago or certain uh is they would sign a major youtube advertising deal with like a coca-cola or something like that uh and occasionally and i say occasionally i would suddenly just get double the amount of youtube revenue as a separate payment and they would just send me an email saying hey we've been we signed this deal with coca-cola and we've been running those ads on your videos uh for the past month and here's like five thousand dollars and i'd be like what the fuck like and but i wouldn't know it was coming <laughs> i had no idea it was just be on occasion uh i would get like the youtube revenue and then suddenly there'd just be another payment but we haven't had that in a really long time probably because we got demonetized it was pre-demonetization yeah it was pre us being like not safe for advertisers uh because i say things like cunt balls and uh you know things like that um <clears throat> then somehow okay anyway let's get back here uh and then somehow a big corporation gets the math wrong on how they should be paying you i.e company is paying you six hundred dollars and a hundred dollars they are giving you specifically to spend on their platform for the content uh thankfully it doesn't really work this way or uh, i don't I actually you know what's really interesting i actually don't know how this works because i don't do it anymore uh nops handles this for us uh so when we did uh last of us amd sponsorship they paid for all the stuff uh we we got we we were like what we earn for it but the special effects person that came to the house uh, and all that kind of stuff they pay for that themselves we don't deal with that i don't know whether nups like puts that in the contract uh sometimes we do have a choice i know he's presenting me he's like either we can go this way or that way uh but i know for like a lot of stuff we do they they put they pay for everything and then we have a separate thing that's our payment for it <clears throat> i had to talk to multiple people before this was rectified also, apparently, some managers didn't like me because, and I quote, hadn't gotten drunk with them before. <sighs> hey, all right. Massive YouTube drama kicking off. Uh, we're going through it right now. It's huge. It would, I can't see it too long, didn't read this for you. It's pretty big. Uh, but we're, we're working through it as we go. Yeah, it's uh, the where the responses come from. Uh, after I came forward with being assaulted, someone accused Linus. You know, Linus like, tech tech. yeah, Linus is uh, under the cosh big time. Bricks are falling from the heavens. Did he touch her thermal paint? Let's not make jokes right now. I'm just pretty serious. So, yeah. After I came forward about being assaulted, someone accused Linus of inappropriate conduct on Twitter. He came over to my corner and started berating her.
Separating her. What does that mean? This is yeah, this is why Emma's not HR. Uh Separating who? The accuser? Oh. Oh, okay. So someone from within the company accused Linus of inappropriate conduct on Twitter. I see. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. So not her. She came forward with being assaulted. Somebody else in the company then publicly accused Linus of inappropriate conduct on Twitter. Okay. <clears throat> he came over to my corner and started berating her, calling her insane, mentally ill, and an attention seeker, and just digging into this poor woman who had felt wronged by him. <sighs> also remember the corner I was in. People would sneak up and try to scare me. I, is this where the grabbing came from? Were they like grabbing her and all that kind of stuff? After the incident, I was nervous about this and requested a mirror so I could see behind me. Jesus Christ, man. What? I need a reflective mirror to see if people are sneaking up at me at work. What? What is that? What is that, dude? Like, what is that? I, I really need a mirror so I can sit at my goddamn desk and make sure people aren't sneaking up at me. <laughs> this girl got assaulted and then all this stuff uh, came out like publicly and Linus went mad at this girl who'd put it on Twitter. Yeah. So she, it got so bad she had to request a mirror for her desk to see how if people were sneaking up on her because they used to sneak up and try and scare her and touch her and stuff like that. Look, I really, really fancy you. I sneak up. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> I need a mirror should make light of this you're bad get out of here you're making it light i don't like it <clears throat> i watched co-workers get what i had asked for weeks before they did it took two months to get a mirror two months to get a mirror what do you want Similar things would happen whenever I requested anything. I needed more RAM on my PC for months because I was expected to edit red footage. <laughs> just edit this red footage. Yeah, Chris, here's the Razer laptop. Just edit this fucking Blackmagic 8K footage. No worries, dude. <laughs> You'll be fine, right, Chris? You'll be fine. <laughs> What's it going to take? Like five seconds to, to, to scrub through it? It's fine. Just, just crack on with it, Chris. No worries. <clears throat> It took five months and a writer being kind enough to do it for me when the numerous requests I sent were ignored or put off. Linus Tech Tips couldn't install RAM into a PC in the office. Oof. Wow. I would go to management for help and get told I could do it myself. Eventually, I was pulled into a meeting for insubordination because I had gone around the system for requesting RAM after I had been ignored for months and dealing with my PC crashing and losing work daily. How many meetings are these guys having to silence people bitching instead of solving the problem? A lot of meetings taking place to stop people bitching rather than, like, install some RAM. <clears throat> there was an incident. I requested a $15 notebook. Keep in mind, I had made maybe $25 of purchase requests in my entire time working at the company. They didn't. They didn't deny the notebook. I requested this notebook to help with my poor time management skills that they had told me. Denied, you don't need it, you have lined paper. <clears throat> you can't have a notebook. You can't have a notebook. You know, this, this, this actually reminds me of the most absurd purchase request I've ever had in my time running Preach Gaming. Andy requested a personal safe because Emma kept stealing his pens. Do you remember that? That is 100% true. It is easily the most absurd purchase request I have ever received in my time running this business is Andy asking for a personal safe for his desk because you kept taking things from his desk. And we actually have evidence that we... Ironically, we have evidence revealed yesterday of your sticky fingers. Is two months ago, I showed you where we keep the pens in this room. There are now two empty pen packets in that drawer and no <laughs> pens. 
nothing. You have no comment. Okay. You have no comment. There'll be a no comment <laughs> interview from me. No comment from Emma on that one. Oh, no. I authorized the request. Andy's request had merit. Unfortunately, I did have to buy Andy a personal safe from Amazon to stop Emma stealing things from his desk. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I don't think I've realistically ever turned down any purchase request. Thankfully, our team doesn't really ask for anything absurd. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. Usually, well, well, when we're all in the office, I usually do a, an ask around. Does anybody need anything while we're doing an Amazon order is usually what I shout out. Like, does it, while, we're, while I'm doing an Amazon order, does anybody need anything? Uh, but yeah, usually. Although Chris did once buy, uh, accidentally bought 16 lights and stands. Because uh, apparently, in his words, the Amazon wording of the order was confusing. <laughs> on a sub note, we are renovating the office soon. Emma's going to get us the date on when we can go back in. Um, no, to be fair, they came in very handy recently. Yeah, we used them recently because they was, we kept them. Christmas said we send it back. Uh, we could have got a refund, but I was like, we always need lights. It'll be required. And literally, it came up three weeks ago is that we needed lights. Uh, and they were they were in the still in the packaging in the storage unit uh, for our office. So we... <laughs> yeah, worth it. Eventually, it paid off. It took a year or two, but eventually, we got there. Uh, oh, anyway, let's get back at this. We've made this really light. It's Emma's fault. I was upset and responded back that this was different. No, then bam, another meeting. Madison, why were you rude and non-communicative with this manager? Another meeting? I think at this point, it's like four or five meetings based on nobody dealing with her problems and stupid shit like denying a notebook for somebody. I didn't mean to be non-communicative, but I was told no, and then I got in trouble because they said they didn't know I was still upset. Cut to me being at my desk and I get a message saying, I did know you were still upset because you never emailed me back. They had lied in front of the big boss to make me look bad. And worst of all, if I knew if I brought this up, I would be the one getting reprimanded for tattling. <sighs> I mean, but that's evidence though. You got a message. If it's not verbal, you send, please God, send that back. Like, look, look at what I'm dealing with. Right? If that's a written message, fucking immediately email. Like, what is going on? Get it on record. Like, this is totally happening. Yeah, like, hope, unless the guy walks up and says, yeah, I knew you are upset because you never emailed me back. Just like, like, fuck that guy. But I would still go and report. It's like, he's literally just walked up to my desk and told me he knew I was upset. Like, what the hell is going on here? Well, again, again you've got to look at it from the perspective of somebody who's already, like, at the brink of mental health issues and can't say anything without getting in trouble. Like, I'm just going to leave it alone. You know, I, loads of people get in that state where they're like, I'm just going to leave it. Everything I say gets me in trouble. It's not worth it. I'm just going to keep tolerating and tolerating it and things get worse and worse and worse. Uh, there are also numerous times where I asked why I couldn't just check up on socials or do little jobs during the weekend because it's social media. Is it really working? Taking us back to the beginning is your job's a farce. Imagine telling someone in 2021 social media isn't a real job sure uh, i'm sure there'll be more things i remember and i wish i had mentioned this thread in the coming hours but for now uh please don't attack individuals who don't actually have power at this company most of them are blameless or powerless to change anything also why didn't you take legal actions i just quit my job i was scared shitless of the company felt like i was worthless and personally i don't have millions of dollars to throw at legal fees when i left i was told they would announce i parted ways from the company on the one show I said no, unless you make sure clearly why I quit. They never mentioned it on the one show. Hot oh, damn. Hot oh, damn. But apparently it gets worse. Okay, so that's come out now. This has been going on for days. Like the snowball has been insane. So what's happened since then? Uh, LTT has posted a response an hour ago. I bet they don't mention her. Uh, Madison speaks out. Screenshot of Linus bragging about getting away with committing a crime if nobody talks against him. Uh, I don't like Linus anyway. You've never liked Linus. His you think voice is a... No, you've told me that for a while. Uh, but that's... Oh, okay. What is this? I'm just scrolling through. This is like updating by the minute, apparently. 
LMG is contacting auction parties. Okay, so this all stems for the video that Gamers Nexus made. Um, LMG is contacting auction participant. Oh no, they're trying to get it back. Oh my god, they're what trying to get the block back. Uh, Alright, the TLDR, because I imagine there's some people in the audience who aren't familiar with this either, is a rival YouTube ch channel that was friends with them, right? They were friends in the tech space and stuff called Gamers Nexus. Uh, we call him Tech Jesus. Made a video, 45 minutes long, uh, which kind of came out of nowhere um, because, you know, as far as we knew, they were all friends. You know, they've worked together. They've done things together in the past. Um, saying that Linus Tech Tips has become unethical. Uh, there it is. It was called The, prob the Problem with Linus Tech Tips. Uh, accuracy, Ethics, and Responsibility. So Tech Jesus uh, went through so much stuff like they've posted incorrect information on their products a lot of sloppy mistakes yeah. because they're they make 25 youtube videos a week at ltt it's a lot uh and so like they posted graphs like this which like it takes a glance to know that this graphics card which is the next step up from this yeah, one yeah, yeah. is not 300 percent better right and i remember watching this video and being like what the fuck like there's no way it's that much better and uh, we talked about it on the stream it's like did you see this like is it is it really that much better uh but it then went into an instant that happened uh with but they're supposed to be friends. they were friends but it's gotten worse and worse a lot of errors and a lot of videos and if you have an audience of millions of people that's a lot of people that are getting misinformed and getting the wrong information and it can really affect products like yeah. companies are trying to sell and an example they brought up uh, got just compoundedly worse is that LTT reviewed this cooler. You see the brown yeah, thing yeah, yeah. here? Uh, and they titled the video, Who Let Them Do This? The $800 Solid Copper Cooler. And this company called Billet Labs made this boutique bespoke cooler that is not particularly practical. I've watched the video since. Uh, that takes It's really hard to put in, but it's for a very, very specific audience of right. people to mess with it. And they tried to install it. And it took forever. You can see the reaction of the people putting it in. The problem was, this thing is super customized and machined to a very specific graphics card. So what you do is you take apart your graphics card to put a different cooler on it. It should run cooler. It, play, it works better. But they used the wrong graphics card that it's not designed for. So it didn't work? No, it didn't work. And they spent ages. And they say it's crap. Yes. And at the end of the video, they say it's crap. Now, they... Which it wouldn't be crap if they it may have been considerably better because this is their argument it's like it's not just that the cooling was bad and we put it on the wrong graphics card or whatever their argument was it's such a hassle to put it on and to make it work that it's just not worth people buying it so that was their you argument do a review say that again how can you do a review of something that you haven't tested with all the right conditions correct that's what the problem is right and that's why gamers nexus was like ethically speaking because that is an immediate proper reaction right from somebody who has no knowledge of what this situation is emma looks at this situation for two seconds how can you draw final conclusions on something you haven't tested properly so gamers nexus uh wherever we were i've lost the video oh there it is uh gamers nexus brings this out but it gets worse this block that this billet lab sent them was the prototype they're still working on it oh. uh and they sent it out so it's a very so expensive prototype no, no, no. It was like what they think it's going to be like for this specific graphics card, but it is the prototype. It's the it's very expensive to make. It's, it's the one they have, right? So they roasted it on the channel. They made this video, blah, blah, blah. And then Billet Labs is like, well, you, you know, they responded in the YouTube comments saying like, we did tell you it was for this other graphics card and it wouldn't work probably with that one. Uh, we're a little upset by this. But in the back end, when you receive products for reviewing like this, you send them back. It's not yours. Yeah. yeah right so we've dealt with that in the past they send us stuff and then we package it up and send it back right um so billet labs who sent them that copper block and as it turns out the graphics card that you were supposed to use was then can we have it back ltt says yeah it'll be coming back and then weeks and weeks pass then <laughs> after not getting it back you won't believe this and it's their prototype that they really, really, really would like back because it's expensive to make and it's like a kind of one of the kind thing. Then shows up. What, for sale? They sold it at their PreachCon style event. <laughs> they auctioned it off. Billet Labs Monoblock. Oh my God. 
right? They then sold it. <laughs> they auctioned it off on their stall to get rid of. And this Billet Labs is like, what the hell? What the fuck? <laughs> what the hell? That's ours. It's our prototype. You absolutely do not have permission to sell this. In fact, we're waiting for it to come back. And now the div the problem as well, there were their competitors were at this event and could have bought it. To copy and clone it. That this company has been working on and researched because it does it does do something special. It joins like a CPU and a graphics card. Yeah, it went like that. But this is where we're up to today. Uh with apparently Linus Tech Tips is contacting the auction participants. They lost everyone's contact details, censored repos, so they're trying to get it back, obviously. Uh, they're like, hey, what does this say? Hello, uh, hi everyone, it's Linus Tech Tips. Can you please let me know the item you won during the LTX auction? Right, surely there'd be some sort of documentation as to postage, who they sent it to. They're claiming they lost it, apparently. Well, I assume the guy took it there and then. The auction winners would have just taken it there. They were there physically in the space. It was like a preach con. No, they're auctioning off some of our stuff or whatever. Uh, People just took it with them. Uh, oh yeah, look, it says, it says it here. We've mistakenly lost the sheet and need it for our tax purposes. Thank you. Bullshit. Bullshit. Okay, so that's the thing. Oh so, yeah, so of course the person that's got it, yeah, it was me. Well, there was a funny meme yesterday, which was like, uh, the guy who actually has this. Like, you destroyed my life. This is from a year ago. What is this now? I son built a tiny YouTube channel named Mind Shop years ago. Due to legal issues with his uh, channel manager, he was not able to get a silver play button. I brought him to the NCIX bankruptcy auction to buy one with the hopes of engraving it with his channel name. We bought it from the auction fair and square, yet you demanded we hand it over to you. We said no, and you got your fans to harass my son and flooded his channel with dislikes and hateful comments. He stopped making videos, fell into depression... He wasn't good with school. He always oh, got bullied, God. but found love in making videos. He expressed a desire in making more videos. I encourage him to continue. We hoped your toxic fans would really leave us alone. I created this Reddit account for him to use in the future. He posted another video last year after a long hiatus, but your fans still continue to harass him. He ended his life in August. That was a year. Yeah. My wife couldn't bear to have any more Christmases without our son, and she ended her life just before Christmas. I am alone now. I have nothing left. I hate you, Linus Sebastian. You built your empire destroying the lives of others. I do not know why people idolize you. You're a monster. <sighs> what? That can't be real. Never know, dear. Hard to tell, but not that much dark as fuck uh god damn yeah i mean we don't know the we don't we don't we don't know the feasibility is reddit after all but uh still uh the plot thickens oh this is from billet labs themselves update for full transparency linus contacted us this evening saying it's likely he can get the block back from the buyer we have declined this offer and asked for the previously agreed monetary value instead of the f for the following reasons. One, we have already spent a significant percentage of the value of the block in the last few days replacing it, assuming we'd never see the original again. That makes sense. We do not know if the original block is still good working condition and how much money will be needed to fix it if it's not. Makes sense. We do not know if any of the bespoke fittings are missing. Each of these costs money to replace, even if they are. LTT even had our 3090 Ti without using it for nine weeks, so we have lost confidence that they will return items quickly. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> that is a great dig. Holy crap. LTT isn't currently in possession of the block. They have only said that they can get it back. We therefore don't know how, when do we get it back, and time is of the essence. Yeah, we've got a company to run. LTT has confirmed that the block is with a private individual rather than a rival company, so lost IP is much less of an issue. Well, thank God. We wanted to state this publicly just in case anyone has issues with the fact that the block has potentially been found. Uh, we chose to take the money instead. I hope you understand our reasoning here 100%. We can have our new block that we're currently making ready in the next couple of weeks, and we are skeptical that we would have the original block back in full working condition in that time. It would be a gamble at the very least. Much love, Dean and Felix. Yeah, 100 100%. Uh, Jesus Christ. 
So I don't know what I don't. There's so much going on here. I actually don't know what the next step is. I don't know what the next step is, honestly. Uh, this video. Oh my god, is this the reply that's just come out? All right, that was two hours ago. I think isn't there another? There's another gamers nexus video on it. Oh god, has he been at it already? Following this is like hard oh yeah linus tech tips terrible Inside response what we built. oh my god so we got a response hey everyone welcome back to the hardware news recap of the week we filmed uh, when was this this was 20 hours ago all right so we the vast majority of this episode a couple days ago but linus media group well specifically linus himself has posted a response to our video and it's not well thought out. Is this the written response that we saw from Linus yesterday? I assume that's what, because it's 20 hours ago and the other video is two hours ago. So this is based on the written response. We're going to insert a section and talk about that. Then we'll get into all the other news topics for the week. Before that, this video is brought to you by Arctic and the Liquid uh, Freezer 2 Liquid for this Cooler, one. <laughs> now including an ARGB yes. model in the lineup. God the Liquid right. Freezer series has been a top performer in our benchmark for years now. And Sorry, Arctic but... has continually fine-tuned its products, even post-launch, with things oh, no, like I'll, kits I'll, I'll for play Ryzen, the for this. ARGB I'll fans for new flare, and new radiator sizes. The company yeah, also has its brand new video, MX6 thermal paste what, on the market like now. Learn more at the links in the description below. So we posted some coverage yesterday with some concerns about hey, data accuracy, views. ethics, Jesus and responsibilities Christ. of Linus Media Group. Not going to recap all that here. You should check that video out before proceeding. It's necessary context. Linus hastily posted a statement about three and a half hours after our video went live. The video raised concerns again about an incredibly large amount of testing inaccuracy issues alongside what we believe to be unethical actions. And just issues with response. I'm not going to be too much of a pause, Andy, but I cannot wait <clears throat> for the point when they said they they didn't sell it, they auctioned it. Oh, that's going to be so creamy. That was part of the defense. We didn't sell your block, we auctioned it. Because that's what matters. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, Steve from Gamers Nexus. He's the one who did the video about the ethics and morality of Linus Texas. Ability as a large outlet in general. Linus's statement... It is an unhinged, unapologetic rant unhinged. where he shirks oh, responsibility wow. and blames others. He tries to play weird semantic games like saying, quote, we didn't <laughs> sell the product, we auctioned it. Or misrepresent the timeline for when he contacted Billet Labs. He triples down on Billet Labs and says, quote, I still disagree that the Billet Labs video is an accuracy issue. It's more like I just read the room wrong. That doesn't even make any sense. It's not the job of a reviewer to read the room and tell the room what it wants to hear. That is called a sycophant. A sycophant is a, is a perfect word to describe it. He also said, quote, we could have retested it with perfect accuracy, but to do so properly, accounting for which cases it could be installed in, none, and which radiators it would be plumbed with, again, a mystery, would have been impossible. And also didn't affect the conclusion of the video, or so I thought. To be clear here, the random caps lock is not us. That's the original emphasis. I mean, we could have retested it with perfect accuracy, but to do so would have been impossible is nonsense. <laughs> and it's very difficult to, to engage with nonsense. Uh, I, I don't know what that means. <laughs> and it completely ignores the enormous video breaking errors yeah, with cooler CPU and GPU testing results and processes that sometimes wildly misrepresent the product stack. Other than the usual platitudes of we wear our imperfection on our sleeves in the interest of ensuring that we stay accountable to you without explaining how it happened or how they'll fix it. Look, we're going to talk about this today, but can we're not going to drag this out and badly, make the whole... Like, genuinely, how badly things can go from, from amazing to bad in the internet world. It's so fast, right? Like, I, I would have said LTT a week ago was like flying high they would bought that big labs they'd like tripled their space they would like pumping videos out millions and millions of views and within like two days two days it's like an absolute titanic it is just right there i live in fear of it every day hopefully i'm doing all right but goddamn, it takes like two days and it's just like kaboom absolute kaboom uh i don't think this will ever seriously affect ltt i think they're too big to fail in many regards 
People still watch that idiot who was like ripping off kids to sell CSGO skins. Like he's that guy still has an audience. Like what the hell? That guy should be in jail. But like he still has an audience. This is not good. Yeah, that, that's the reality of it. New standalone video about this response because they haven't added anything of substance. The response is immature. It's blaming others and it's irresponsible to the community they've built. But we are going to talk about some of the issues in this statement nonetheless, and then we're moving on. Let's start with Billet. This is where the story is getting a little bit twisted. We saw some comments about this confirming our concerns that people would lose track of the actual timeline. First of all, we're not going to argue the semantics about an item <laughs> being sold against the will of a company versus being auctioned and being for charity, which we already said doesn't make that better. It makes it worse because now you're roping in an innocent third party into a very awkward situation that can potentially make them look bad by proxy. Uh, and, and secondly, this is actually what we said. The first time they agreed to send it back was June 30th. At LTX, Linus Media Group put the one-of-a-kind water block up for auction at its Extra Life auction event. More seriously, Linus's statement, which reads, quote, we have already agreed to compensate Bill Labs for the cost of their prototype, uses specific language to imply that this was agreed upon prior to our video launching. Oh, Following no. this forum post from Linus, we reached no. out to Billet Labs, with whom we'd already had contact, and we asked them the following. We said Linus's comment doesn't expressly say it, but it seems to imply that this agreement was made previously. Billet Labs said no, oh, absolutely no. not. No, no, no. <laughs> the only mention of any money to do with the prototype was our response to them after they said they'd auctioned it. And we basically said, you know, that was an expensive prototype. They didn't want us to share the exact dollar amount. Billet continued to explain their email. They said, quote, I said, do you plan to reimburse us for this? And we heard nothing. We didn't get a response until your video. And Billet thanked us for it. We asked Billet. Jesus, man. Oh my God, the effort. You you must have known that people would find out that you would absolutely not agreed this until after the noise had been made. You must have known. And to throw that into your response, that you would agree to pay it back and all that. Oh my, that is so stupid. How did you not suspect that this guy who drove to what was that pc company that went under and like broke into their building to see what was going on not newegg the other cup artesia bills this guy got in a car and drove to their warehouse and got the security guard to let them in to see what the hell was going on is not gonna ask billet labs whether or not they'd agreed this this guy you're gonna like check, you're gonna like hope this guy doesn't double check facts. This guy. <laughs> Absolutely no way. Absolutely no way you that stupid. Oh my God. <laughs> when it had received that email from Linus and they noted it arrived about two to three hours after we published our video, uh, which would have been around the same time that Linus posted the comments on the forums. So he wrote that email and he posted and then said <laughs> they've already come to an agreement. But at the time he posted it, Billet hadn't uh, responded to the email. And just for the record, we have a wait, timeline wait, wait. of that. They hadn't even agreed. He sent them an email saying, we'll reimburse you for it. After Gamers Nexus makes their video, he then immediately makes a forum post and Billet Labs haven't even responded to say, yes, that's okay. He just goes ahead like he did with that Madison saying I'm hiring her and she's like, what the hell? You haven't even shown me a job description or a salary and apparently you're hiring me. He just tells millions of people that he's hiring her and she's like, I guess. What's good? Jesus Christ. And so I vetted them and Linus Media Group did in fact agree to send the block back on June 30th and they agreed again later and then they followed up to tell Billet that wait, they- wait, let me read this. Uh, June 30th, let me know if you'd like the block back either way and we can ship it back with the 3090 Ti. July 6th, we'll send back the model block and the 3090 Ti. July 12th, the block of the 3090 Ti should be sent sometime next week. July 30th, LTX Extra Life auction featuring billet block ends early August. So there was a communication mishap and we ended up auctioning off the monoblock in a silent auction for charity at LTX. The good news is that it isn't just sitting on a shelf. Oh, 
<laughs> you should be happy because it's not like not getting use. We've sold it to someone. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Can you believe this? If you'd have sent that email to someone, I would have been like through the roof. Jesus. Oh, they've only sent that. Oh my god, that is fucking funny. It's sad and funny all at the same time. Oh my god. We would have a tracking number soon, and then it was last seen at the auction at LTX. So today was the first time that Billet had direct contact with Linus. I need to read these, they're too important. Uh, last night, regarding the Billet Lab situation, could you please publicly state and justify the monetary compensation paid out to Billet Labs for the loss of their prototype? What steps are you taking to prevent such as in the future? Linus responds, Billet sent us a quote. I don't know or ca care how they arrived at the value. If they're good, I'm good. As for what steps we're taking, you're talking about an outlier issue that has happened once in 10 years of operation. There won't be a new uh, SOP to ensure we don't accidentally auction stuff. We just need to tighten up some documentation. A comment from Linus Lower in the forum reads this, quote, Billet sent us a quote. I don't know or care how they arrived at the value. If they're good, I'm good. We asked them about this, and Billet emphasized to us that it had not sent Linus Media Group a quote. It noted that it had expressed a possible value of the block in frustration before our video. They <laughs> haven't sent him a quote. I'm going to defend Linus momentarily for a second. He is clearly being given half-assed information. And getting half-assed information when you're the public voice that's replying to stuff is the worst thing in the world. And that's what he needs to sort out real quick. Like, somebody has obviously told him, it's like, it's fine, we're taking care of it. Yeah, We've got a quote. To yeah, they're trying to not stress out their boss. So somebody along the line is Linus is like, what the hell is happening with this? What's going on? Because you no doubt this guy is freaking out right now, right? Of course he is. And somebody is going, we've got a quote. We're, we're reimbursing them. We're getting it sorted. It's fine. And like, that's not accurate. No, we don't have a quote. And you can't just do that. It's like, oh, well, we're dealing with it. It's like, no, no, no. I have to publicly go in front of potentially millions of people and talk about this issue that is affecting our entire business and you're not giving me accurate information. And now I look more of an ass than ever. So I will defend lies a little bit there. Uh, but like, it's still trash, obviously. It's a comedy of errors the whole way down. Before this conversation began, after they learned that it had been auctioned previously, but that this wasn't any kind of quote or invoice. We asked Billet if it had anything further to share, and it said, he's emailed us. We haven't emailed back yet at the time of writing. Uh, we thank the community for the support. We stand by everything we've said publicly. Billet noted that they intend to email Linus back prior to sharing any further details, and they also spent a few minutes to express very sincere gratitude to the community, uh, and as they don't have quite as much of a platform, I I'm just conveying that to you. They were extremely grateful to the support that they've received from uh, yeah i just want to respond to this it ultimately it's his responsibility yes and that's where the changes need to take place it is if you're getting half-assed information from your team because they're either sloppy or they're trying to protect you that doesn't work like we've argued about this most many times haven't we it's like it's important that i have the exact information because I'm going to talk about it in front of a lot of people. And I'm also recorded. Like everything I say all the time is recorded regardless. So it needs to be accurate. Otherwise, we I end up coming on here and being like, yeah, we're sorry. But that is still my responsibility. If my team isn't giving me the right information, I need to take responsibility for that. Ultimately, the book stops with me and I need to do it. So Linus is the same. Like I know he's not the CEO anymore. But of course, he's going to be directly involved. He's still the owner of the company. They might be afraid of the reaction, which is something you need to sort again. Yeah, if you're somebody who flies off the fucking handle all the time, uh, even with little bits of information, yeah, that's a problem that also needs solving, and it's his responsibility to fix it. Uh, and I, I, I oh, Emma's got a question. What's your question, Em? I want to know. This guy. Jesus. Yeah, so he's worked with Linus a lot. Yeah. Like and they were friends. Worked, similar to how we worked with Bob all the time. Right. Yeah. So when did his conscience come into play that he suddenly needs to out... Linus. I, I, I would imagine it was the Billet Labs thing, which was like, we've gone too far. Yes, we're noticing these errors in your videos, technical specs and all those kinds of things. Oh no, that's not true. Yeah, that, yeah that, I, that's, that, I'm giving you misinformation. Uh, somebody at LTT 
Uh, no, a, third, a YouTuber went to do a tour of LTT because they've got massive studios and stuff. So uh, they went and did a video and somebody on, on Linus's staff pointed out how Gamers Nexus and another YouTube channel called Hardware Unboxed don't do as much testing as they do because they have this big labs facility. And uh, Jesus took that personally. And now we have the locusts swarming. So I'm just going to say, it's, it's beneficial to him, is it? Now suddenly develop this. Uh, I don't think it's about suddenly developing a conscience. It's just like among friends, I could tell, and we'll all be guilty of this, every single one of us, you'll let some little errors slide with some friends. As long as it's not mega egregious, like a lot of the stuff they pointed out was like graphical errors with information and stuff that didn't change the outcome of the videos, but it's still sloppy and not accurate and all that kind of stuff. Uh, with a lot of friends, you'll, you'll absolutely give a pass on certain things. But when they sort of like actually poking you about it, the gloves come off, right? That's that's the reality of the world. Like the gloves come off. Like if you're going to start poking the bear, then like what what am I supposed to do? If you're yeah, if you're going to start I prodding at me, I think he probably an opportunity. Well, he's pissed off, I imagine. Like they, uh, this this channel to give context is notorious for its specificity, like really really accurate data. It's what they built their channel on and their accuracy. They're not as mu they're not particularly an entertainment channel as much as they are very, very specific technical things. So when somebody else is calling out their testing methodology, they're going to take that very, very seriously. Because yeah. that's what they're about. So yeah, I've no doubt it really, really pissed them off. Um, and like, fuck him. And also they're big enough to take it on. Like a lot of big channels. We saw this a while ago with NVIDIA, I think. NVIDIA was like bullying some small channels. I might be wrong on being NVIDIA. Uh, was bullying smaller channels, saying they weren't allowed... They weren't going to give them review copies of GPUs anymore. Uh, and was like, unless they got like positive stuff, hardware unboxed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember it happening. And their channel's like too small to fight back. Uh, Gamers Nexus is not small. What are they? Two million subscribers. Really good average view rate. So they're fine with like, screw you. Like, we don't need you. Uh, I, don't, I, I think in the first video, it was more of a case of like, don't call us out when you're producing all these errors. For me though, as an outsider, mm -hmm. not not into it at all. For me, like with a lot of these online things, it seems to be once one thing's come out, yeah. there's a, like another thing and another thing and another thing, and then all of a sudden, like realistically, yeah, this is bad. But at the same time, it's like why drag it out? Like who's that bothered to drag it out to this extent where all of a sudden Linus is like the worst person on the planet because he auctioned something out. Do you know what I mean? Like It's usually a uh, fear, honestly, a fear of reprisal. Like, uh, especially like that Madison pointed out. She's been harassed since the day she left two years ago because big channels, as you well know, have some very, very dedicated fans who will defend people to the death. And we, I mean, you've, you've experienced this when we went through the Method Josh thing. Is that was like, we would, you know, we were raped through the coals, not as bad as the players and stuff, but like it went on forever. Right for months and months, the amount of abuse that we got yeah, and right, because of so it. That, but what I'm Not rightly is, so. We didn't do shit. No, what I'm saying is that was <laughs> dragged out for months. Mm -hmm. I just think everyone. Oh, people thrive like, off drama. Yeah, of course, people, people thrive off drama. Are, like waiting for it. Wow, people also and suspect it as well. It. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people feel. I think what you're saying is, why do people hold back until? Uh, one thing tips and then it snowballs but I, again i think it's a lot of fear of what the reprisal will be is coming out as an individual especially if you think you're the only one who's been affected this way so your voice will be drowned out right that's often what i see with people is like i had this really horrible I experience <laughs> yeah, emma doesn't watch the soaps but um i had this really horrible experience with somebody who is known by millions of people hundreds of thousands of people as being a really great dude and is universally liked. So I think that makes a lot of people feel like there's something wrong with them. Like they did something wrong, right? That's how I see it. It's like this, this person is like universally loved by so many people. And I went through this experience and nobody else has ever mentioned something like this happening. Right, but this metal box. And other things. Like it's, it's, this is where we're at. We're expanding with it. Uh, let's go on. 
uh, let's push. Think that they felt some closure on their side. Now we get into something important. As far as Linus's belief that we should have reached out to him first and that not doing so somehow makes the 44 minutes of reporting any less valid, and considering the fact that he said there would have been valuable contacts such as, quote, the fact that while we haven't sent payment yet, we've already agreed to compensate Billet Labs with the cost of their prototype, <laughs> which again, Linus emailed Billet after the video. Yeah. And this Billet situation is exactly why. This sentence structure makes it appear as if Billet already agreed to some kind of resolution before the video. That's why it's our responsibility when doing proper reporting to ensure that the truth gets to viewers and that it's not misrepresented by a manufacturer. We don't have to reach out to corporations when we think no, there's we a patterned behavior or that there may be a significant chance that they try to cover things up uh, or prepare pre I see Emma's point there. There's could... definitely a malicious side to this. It can't be ignored that he was like, screw you. You said this about us. Yeah, We're coming in. Good. Yeah, that, that exists. Yeah, yeah. It, it absolutely exists. You're not wrong. There is definitely a side of this of like, you really pissed me off yeah. uh, with what you were saying. You and you're coming. Yeah, and you're coming at it with full guns blazing. But he's also within his rights to do that. That's not a bad thing. He's absolutely within his rights to like be, what did you just say about us? Screw you. I'm going in. Like, absolutely, you're going to call out our methodology, our testing. You have been making errors in all these videos for months. Yeah, it doesn't make it wrong. That's, that's no, absolutely the case. it doesn't make it wrong. What I'm saying is it definitely benefits him if he's got millions of people watching his video. Yeah, but I don't think he's doing it for the money. He's doing it because of the insults to his professionalism. That's how we, I, I, judging from what I know, I don't know these guys. We don't interact in the tech space. But uh, I know they take, I can guarantee they take so much pride in their technical accuracy and them being the channel to go to if you want the really, really super correct technical data of hardware that you're potentially spending thousands of dollars on, that somebody, uh, this, this one's, the first one wasn't monetized, this one's monetized. Uh, but he sees it as a point of pride. An absolute point of pride. Uh, a hundred percent point of pride. Like, screw you, man. Like, absolutely not. You guys have been making literal so many factual errors and technical errors for months. And your staff have this ego where they're calling out what we do, even though our stuff is bang on. Like, no way. Uh, the monetization doesn't matter. It gains attention regardless, right? You guys understand that, right? Like, we're all talking about Games Nexus. Like, there's lots of... I'm not... I'm saying there's no direct monetary involvement on the thingy. I don't think he did this for the money. I want to be clear on that. I don't think he did it for the money. But there's obviously influence and power to be gained from it and uh, attention. Uh, so, it's... Yeah, I don't think it was a money thing. I think this was purely... Uh, a, a a shot back at them being called out given that their entire foundation of their channel is on yeah. their technical accuracy yeah. right and then your company which has has this millions of uh what's what's ltt value that it's like a hundred million dollars right and that has this entire facility for testing and you're buying we've seen so, so many videos from ltt recently of buying like we've bought a nine hundred thousand dollar fridge to put pcs in yeah, like all sorts of stuff. Like we've bought this uh, thing from China that does headphones to like the nth decibel uh, so we can test that for you. Like all this mega, mega equipment. And then these guys don't have those resources. And they built an airflow tester using mirrors and like sticky tape. <laughs> it still works. Still works fine. And I did watch that video where they're like, okay, we turn all the lights off and then we blow like smoke into it. And then we have like mirrors refracting it back to a camera that we've got kind of like dangling from a tripod. <laughs> and it totally works. They don't have those resources. And there's an ego that's obviously taken place at LTT, which is like, yeah, we have all this fancy tech and we're doing all this testing. We have a team of like 30 testers or whatever they've got going on. Uh, and these, they, they like screw you our data is better than yours are you joking and you're calling out our testing Fuck, twist the narrative and in this case manipulate the audience linus willfully ignoring our valid criticisms of data I mean, accuracy he's mad. you can see it. and he's mad as fuck. Uh, some of the ethical concerns while then trying to manipulate the audience into viewing him as the victim not just lmg this was very uh, is, is bizarre. This is why we don't reach out every time. I want to be very clear. We don't have to reach out to corporations prior to reporting on them, period. For big corporations, we don't reach out if the issue already harms consumers or if their view is irrelevant. The Walmart PC, the Alienware PC, any number of products we buy, we don't need to reach out because the damage is being done actively. And we don't need 
Linus's input or permission to make that video. Uh, LMG's videos are already affecting millions of consumers, and they have objective errors that we covered objectively, and they involved serious ethical concerns, which we raised. Uh, and rather than addressing those, he's choosing to try and distract viewers by whining about us, not allowing whining him to us. comment first. <laughs> and they've already commented anyway. They did it in all of these various WAN shows. We know what their comment oh, is. Oh, they always we find know it. They, they found the clip. And when there's an objective, factual issue, we don't need to reach out. The risk is to the consumer. And these aren't unreleased products. They are public videos. Gotcha. A lot of views. And I am exceptionally disappointed in this response. I am baffled that this was the path chosen. I, I don't know. I don't know how to respond to this circular deflecting nonsense. As for the rest of the sort of meandering diatribe, it's, meandering it's just bizarre. Meandering diatribe. Um, oh, my God. I, I, I really am. I am genuinely just disappointed by this. Uh, here's one such quote. I'm that's sorry that's I got the community's priorities mixed up on this one and that we didn't show the billet in the best light. Our intention wasn't to hurt anyone. We wanted no one to buy it because it's an egregious waste of money, no matter what temps it runs at. Another quote. Will the, it was a mistake, a bad one, but a mistake, and they're taking care of it reality, managed to have the same reach. This is a very bitter way to admit a mistake, but my answer to that question, because it had a question mark at the end of it, is... Not if you are insincere and indignant about it. No. He then talked about being real people and said, quote, today sucks. Look, well, guys, I'm not going to mince words uh, to protect my reputation amongst sort of He's the- He's just the firing cannons now. Devout LTT supporters. Oh, my God. And, uh, that's gaslighting. That's what it is. He's called like, him a gaslighter. We're the victims. Feel bad for us. That's yeah, what that, that was is. the end of the so, email. It's like, not uh, acceptable behavior. It is like, um, embarrassing. Human. And here's one more. Adam and I were talking about this today. He advocated for retesting it, regardless of how non-viable it was as a product at the time. Just like Emma did. And I think he expressed really well we today why it mattered. It. it was like making a video about a supercar. It doesn't matter if no one watching will buy it. They just want to see it rip. I missed that. But it wasn't because I didn't care about the consumer. It was because I was so focused on how this product impacted a potential buyer. I have Bullshit. no... Uh... We know why they I didn't no do it. I, I don't know, guys. There's I'm no not sure I if I can it. apologize for not spending another 100 200 300 500 dollars of various people's time. So I'll, I'll wrap this up by saying, look, we had data points in there that were completely ignored. They weren't mentioned at all in any of this. I, we talked about $500 <laughs> was even the top end of what he was describing there to have this product retested. And he got millions. <clears throat> yes. That's a lower budget than we put on videos, right? And if we screwed up, like if I take into account Chris's time, Bex's time, my time, the props we need to pick up, going to the storage unit, setting all the cameras up, all the stuff that's required for us to make a video, $500 does not even scratch the goddamn surface. And to have Linus with his hundred million value dollar business say that we can't invest a few hundred dollars in making this right, and being being able to have the goddamn foundation to say we tested it properly and it still sucks fine like no one would bitch about that look we retested it and it still sucks that would have been okay but you can't do this right <laughs> yeah the video has to come out we've already shot it and it's done it's in the day. can less than three too late I've already recorded it. I'm on to like seven videos later at this point. I'm not going back to that stupid cooler water block. I'm not doing it. Serious testing issues. We talked about methodological issues. We talked about lack of process. We talked about lack of QC. We talked about the fact that people can look at numbers that are 300% off in some cases, or in the cases of coolers, are just literally incorrect because it was backwards or installed improperly, and, and how they can get past people. None of that was addressed. This was a layup to say, here's our 10 point plan. Yeah, we fucked up. Here's what we're gonna do to fix it. There's an odd note in the statement about using their notes against them, like as if we're weaponizing their transparency or something. And I wanna be clear again, like the vast majority of the significant errors I found, they're not pinned <laughs> under their videos. I found them. I went and I looked at the numbers and I compared their own numbers against their own numbers. And then I found those errors, right? Like. It's misrepresenting reality here, and it is choosing to ignore it.
So here's the deal. If LTT releases a new PR-inspired comment after this or goes on another rant, we probably won't be responding. Lies. This was Maybe. LMG's chance to Maybe. take responsibility. And he's shown LMG's true colors and what he as the owner really thinks. And we're greatly disappointed at the tripling down rather than proposing future-looking solutions. At this point, we wouldn't believe them if they released a new statement to try and undo Oof. this one because it's clear to us what the company's owners thought of Oof. these issues. And um, I just... At this point, say I, what I you can't want. get over this. I don't believe a word you We didn't sell it. Yeah, it's fair. We That's auctioned immediate it. response. Seriously? Like that? Oh, now that the real stuff's coming out. is what we're going to open with. Got us. Whatever. We're going to go back to the rest <laughs> of Hardware News. I'm going to drop this in. Um, that's your update. Up next, some pretty. Okay, and now it gets worse from there, does it? Uh, I, I, I don't want to watch that, Bex. Just to, if that's if that's if that's just true, and that guy died, like I don't want to watch that. Uh, but it, it gets worse. Oh my god. Uh, okay, all right. I'm checking. I'm checking. I'm checking. <laughs> no, I had a load of plans for gaming stuff, but oh, oh no, not the sad face. Oh, Saj. Emma, what do you think of the sad face? The photo shoot he did for the thumbnail. This is his response. Came out a couple of hours ago. You know what he looks like? He reminds me of the elf on the shelf that's gone through puberty. That's what he looks like. You don't think it's an appropriate sad face? Oh. I think Luke put it best. Oh. This is the, the, new, the new man in charge, is it? He looks shocked. He looks annoyed. I think this guy's been in the job for like a month. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is the uh, line of step down as CEO. Yeah, that's his face when they said we auctioned it off. Yeah. Uh, uh, he started in July 1st. Because <sighs> as far as I know, LTT has not had any major, major controversies over its like 10 year lifespan or whatever. And now he's like, <sighs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I've been here for six weeks. Six weeks. Uh, okay, here we go. <clears throat> the roast a few years ago when he said why the f are you here <laughs> that's a two-part answer i'm speaking today because of the recent community outcry demanding change i'm here because i agree with the community you're we looking at my fucking soul before we talk about that while i wish us on better terms i just want to say i'm very glad to meet you all i have spent the last couple of decades on the corporate side oh dude he's got a teleprompter that's why it looks so weird oh god man yeah, he's got a teleprompter. That's why it looks so wacky. Mm. You can't open with this. My educational background is in computer science. Teleprompters are fine, the tech but you need somebody who knows how to look at it. My history retain. building gaming PCs goes even further back to when I built a Celeron 300A rig because everyone assured me it was guaranteed to overclock to 450 megahertz. I guess my trip didn't really get the memo. In any case, it feels really good to be back on most days. I'm only six weeks into the job, camera, but at that time I've seen a lot. I've looked at some budgeting, some team building, and operations. But my main focus has been to be a fly on the wall and gain an understanding of what's going right and what's going wrong. There's a lot of both. I've asked the team to unflinchingly address both the concerns that have been raised and how we intend to fix he them. He pulls out a guitar. What's the money we'll make from our sponsor? <laughs> Just kidding. I was asked for unflinching, and here it is. Linus is a human gas molecule. You've been telling him for years, and I've been telling him for years. Staying relevant on YouTube is hard for everyone, but we aren't fighting for survival anymore, and we don't need to run at this pace. In fact, in some ways, it's our efforts to keep doing more and keep doing better that have created our current situation. My background is in managing a pharmacy where the small details matter a lot. And basically, I agree with the community, so I'm putting my foot down. Effective immediately, all YouTube video production is on pause. And our teams are going to be spending this entire next week focusing on long-term workflow changes to make our content better in a lasting way. This means for the first time in over 12 years, LTT will be missing not just one daily upload, but many. But improving to the degree that we want and need is going to take more than a week. Yeah. So I'll be working with Taryn and Colton to manage our sponsor commitments and the financial hit of both this housekeeping week and a reduction in our LTT upload schedule, at least for now, while we get our house in order. But before anyone gets concerned that we're going to cut it. Who's this for? This is not for, who's this for? Are we supposed to feel sad that they're taking a week off? 
<laughs> shareholders yeah like who who's this for oh yeah steve really cares that they're not uploading for a week like who is this for this is so like miss missing the mark okay it, it, it feels like again watching one of those like nintendo switch videos where everyone's at a fucking party on a rooftop like who who are we watching here like, is this supposed to be what all gamers are like on our rooftop barbecues? Like, <laughs> in our dockers and our gap clothes, like, all playing Switch together? Investments into the well-being of our personnel and our future capabilities. I can assure you that I've read the criticisms that we weren't willing to spend $500 to test a product, and as the one that manages the finance, I can tell you that couldn't be further from the truth. Linus made a clear and egregious judgment error regarding retesting a product he felt was impractical. That was wrong. Shit. Oh, I don't think I know she works for the business, but I don't think I could have Emma come on and apologize for me. That sounds it just feels like having your mum call school. Oh, I don't think I could do that. Oh, that feels gross. Yeah, it's his wife, and I, that's what I'm saying. I just don't think I could have Emma come on, like, a video and, like, apologize on my behalf. Oh. Emma's my wife, by the way. That's why I'm saying that, if you didn't know that. But, like, oh, try it now. Oh. Oh. Oh, that makes me feel sick. Oh. And I've told him so. He allowed his personal feelings on the matter to cloud his judgment. Oh and God, I want to stress so that bad. our organization is committed to our ongoing investments in making our content better. And we will do better as a team. Why don't I let our chief money spender his take it from here? Told him off. Hi, I'm Gary, head of labs. First off, Hi, we've made some mistakes. Too many. We're hoping that it's how we deal with them moving forward that will define who we are. And regardless, it's clear that we need to serve you better. So our team will be spending our week publishing living documents for our testing standards and opening them I'm sure up he's coming up. He's like the grand event. In our peers in the industry. You need that video retention. Participate. We will also task part of the team with going back through Linus every is the main event, with Lamps sure. data to ensure accuracy, make full corrections, and if there are any fundamental issues with the workflow design or results, pull or replace that video outright. I don't agree with every criticism that's been leveled at my team. But I'm Captain for my part, I need the to own what we've done wrong and lay out our... Right, let me mute notifications. It's uh, not the time or the place. Hold on. <clears throat> I'm Captain Bosch. Exactly. This He's... feels like the... You opened the floodgate. Stop. <laughs> stop, stop, stop. Gary's not taking any shit, though. Gary's like, you know what? Fuck you guys. I don't agree with everything you said. I, I wonder if the guy who made that comment uh, towards Gamus Nexus, because he is actually like the, the kickoff of all this. He's the one who pushed the, pushed the tiny rock at the top of the hill. I wonder if that guy's been fired. Like, you're absolutely gone. Get out of here. I wonder if that's what's going to come out in the next couple of days that that guy is out. Action plan for how to move forward. Before I do that, one point I do need to address here is that Linus misspoke when he said we retest for every video. We retest for every project. When we use the same data for our RX 7600. Okay, we're getting a theme. Everybody shit on Linus. He's going to take it on the face. This is a bukkake is what you're watching now. This is a corporate PR bukkake. Who is taking the fall for this? Linus is taking the fall for this. Get on your knees, son. Because we're all lining up, and the way we sell this is that we all shit on liners. That's what this is. This is exactly what this is. He's going to take it on the face and get absolutely blasted. Uh, this is, uh, this, this is, I've seen this before. It's brutal, but he's going to take absolutely everything on the chin here. Every mistake that everyone made down the line is going to be all at him. In RTX 4060 Ti videos, we knew in advance that these cards would release two days apart and designed a broad test suite that accounted for all the numbers we would need to make those two videos and ran everything at once with no BIOS or driver changes. I think he in probably pushed his wife to do this. The project to video ratio I have to is take normally it. 
one to one. He's trying to dark knight the himself. The in the details. I'm the hero now, we need right let's now. Let's talk about what's coming. We will release our current Mark Bench harnesses. Is open I honestly, I, I I might be reading too much into this, and Gary's got some good points. I have the feeling his wife sounds so upset because she absolutely does not want to be on camera saying my husband is a fuck up. I I, I that's the feeling I got from the Von section. Is like I really do not want to be here having to say that my husband is a fucking clown. Like I don't think this is a good idea. I don't think it is, and she's been told to do it. Like. And that's that's my goal. I'm, again, I might be reading too much into that, but that's the feeling when I get somebody who's having to read the script, and she's read through it beforehand. And it's like, so I'm literally saying I've taught, I've told my husband he's wrong, I blah blah blah, all that stuff. Like it feels grim. This feels awful. So that the community can audit the code around our test integrations, we will do a vlog style video on Floatplane about our testing from start to finish. So you can see how the sausage is actually made. Yeah. We will open a new community forum post asking for transparency suggestions. And more importantly, we will follow up. We will start placing our testing project number in the credits. So we are always open about the data set that was used for the benchmark results. And there is a lot anyway. more still to come, ranging from test variation percentages for workbench to you guys want a gamba how many people in appear in this video others. do not work at ltt it's in going six to months. be a busy week of not making videos same goes for us i'm james head of the writing department we are extremely grateful for everything the lab has done and continues to do to make our jobs easier but the actual testing is not the biggest source of our recent struggles oh uh, um it's the human factor uh, sorry to pause again but uh they had his wife come on and say directly that my my husband is a fuck up and all that and she told him all. it was like a mom mean? calling in school uh he's not even appeared yet this is the linus response but uh it's Why all the members of the oh it, it was really sad she looked like she was gonna cry and everything but that's that's the script they gave her oh Emma was just telling me I'm a useless wanker. <laughs> it was, I think it was, um, uh, all right, all right. It was nice and it worked out. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She was just giving me the olive oil treatment. But uh, she, she wanted, see, she's a nice wife because she did it off camera. There have been times when an internal video review caught an incorrect graph, resulting in new versions of the graph being created, only for those new graphs to not be put in the video. Ah! Just about every error that has appeared in a video in the past year has directly resulted in a process change designed to prevent that specific issue from ever happening again. But this kind of problem. What do you want, mom? What do you want? I'm, I'm really in the middle of something. Jesus Christ. pops up. Creating I can't new process, get called a cop one more time. Isn't working. We'll be using our time to take feedback from our team on all of our processes and comb through all of our pending projects for areas where we can improve as we move forward with our reduced upload schedule. You'll uh -huh. see some of these videos go up during our time off. We already have multiple videos that are scheduled for release. But my main message to the team is that we want to spend wait, wait. this oh time. Oh my god, on now the dog's barking! What are you doing to me? I'm trying to react, Andy! Make it impossible! 
out. See the conditions I have to work under. It's unbelievable. Did they just say they're still going to release videos this week? Did we, wait, is that what he said? Processes and comb through all of our pending projects for areas where we can improve as we move forward with our reduced upload schedule. You'll see some of these videos go up during our time off. We already have multiple videos that are scheduled for release. But my main message to the team is that we want to spend this time working on interdepartment communication and cleaning up our house. What we won't be doing is sanitizing things too much. We know that some of our best videos are centered around Linus and other members of the team goofing around with tech and having fun. That is not going to stop. I really but hope they're not going to be uploading videos because your average viewer is not going to understand. Like, didn't you say that you're not uploading videos and then videos came out? What do you mean? <laughs> Yeah, like, if they do that, it's just never going to work. The average viewer is just going to be like, yeah, but you still uploaded videos. Like, what the hell? Like, what's going... What? What's... There's, like, GPU and CPU releases certainly require all the rigor we can muster. Those launches don't happen as often these days, so it will take some time before you see the full payoff yeah, release them next of week. our continuous improvement. Videos are already made. But it made. has release already started week. happening. Not only did the community love our 4060 review, but our team found it less stressful to put out. Have we had a flawless victory? No. But since these last reviews, we've onboarded a dedicated visualization. I doubt that mentioning Madison in this video. Is to I would be that very surprised. Digestible and accessible. We've done serious development on our automatic specs database thing so that our visualizations pull the correct info in every time. And we'll soon be announcing the details of a new crowdsourced fact checking system for both LTT and Tech Quickie so that our content's correctness satisfies even our most discerning community members. Oh, they're removing the I'm comments. Ed, head of our production team. We have some of the most comprehensive documentation and processes in the company, from automation yeah, well, to got a calendar, key project so. information accurate, it, to communication procedures, to standards for how loud videos can be. Those systems have helped with the video edit side of things, but I've seen some examples where we've failed to see the forest for the trees and allowed well-edited but erroneous content to slip through the cracks. Why is your audio so for scuffed? our part, we'll be spending our time looking at how we can improve communication to help the team address anything that seems off What's that noise? as soon as possible. A personal task for me will be putting the finishing touches on some cool ways we can make small edits that avoid the slapdash text on screen corrections whenever possible. As for how we catch those- Do you guys not hear that? No, there's something at the back. There's something different going on. It's not just his voice. There's something else in the background. It's so weird. Those bugs? That's not my department, so I'm throwing it over to Nick. Hold on, hold on. I'm mostly on the product side. LTTstore.com. What? Dude. Somebody had to say it. No, no, they didn't. What the? F Are you out of your mind? Are you out of your mind? No, nobody had to say it. What are you doing? Oh my God. I, oh my god, dude. Absolutely not. Oh, Jesus Christ. But the theme of today's video is transparency and accountability. You might not see me in video credits, but I still serve as a last line of defense in reviewing most LTT videos before they are published. I typically check for security links and inappropriate or NSFW jokes, but there are times when I catch a factual error or a weird graph that doesn't really tell the full story. To be clear, we also have checks for technical aspects from our writing team, and in some cases, the lab, but our processes for ensuring those checks happen and following up these findings haven't been perfect and our corrections are often made quickly. So while we take this time to reflect, I'll be focused on helping build a set of guidelines for our pre-release reviews oh. and trying to set up a system that allows our team to take a finer look at every aspect of our videos, every Bureaucracy single time. And maybe with time, everyone here will be so aligned with our mission that my input is no longer needed and I can focus my full attention on making little widgets that you don't need, but definitely want. Like this retro-themed screwdriver. Bro, like absolutely unbelievable. That whole so section needed to be removed. Like that absolutely needed to be chopped out. Like that is awful. Holy shit, did that miss the mark? Like so far off. That was like blind Robin Hood who'd fell off a cliff and still had to try and hit the target on top of the cliff. Like that was so bad. Holy shit.
That was sucking so fucking bad. That was unbelievable. That was like watching Emma play in FPS. Just no, everything got hit except the target. Like fucking bullet spray. That was Predator. That was shredding the jungle and Predator's fine. That was ridiculous. Prisoner supporting assets like tables and graphs to chip away our credibility. So continue to improve our process issues to minimize errors will remain a top priority under my leadership. I guarantee there will be future mistakes. We are human. But in the next week, we'll be creating and publishing a clear policy for correction handling. And I'll be working with our community management team to be prompt and transparent with corrections that are as visible as possible. I think what happened with the Polish mouse is a perfect example of the kind of breakdown that should never happen again. Last Friday, Linus was notified of the issue a couple hours before the wine show, where he discussed the errors of the video on short circuit and apologized unequivocally. But while we recut the video to remove the misleading information, no one closed the loop and dealt with a tone deaf and frankly unapologetic correction in the pinned comment. Our mission is to get the information no, to the no, community. No, 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 motherfucker. That's not the problem. They're talking about that mouse video where you had the fucking film on it. You left the video up while it was being trimmed so that people kept watching it before the edits had gone in and were still getting misinformed even though you knew it was wrong. That's where you screwed up, asshole. It's not that you were like, oh, it, it was this and this and that. It was because you left that fucking information up knowing it was incorrect and it takes like two days for youtube to process a trim i don't care who you are youtube takes fucking forever to process a trim in system it takes ages and bex will fucking attest to it and you just left it there that's what you did wrong you should take it fucking down not hard just unlist it for a couple of days and put it back up which includes having a degree of humility about our mistakes even if it makes us look less than perfect the other side of my job as CEO is keeping the lights on, ensuring our staff is well taken care of and putting dollars into some fun stuff, like watering and cooling a PC with a pool. And that's through sponsorships, affiliate programs, paid subscriptions, or merchandise sales. One thing that's not negotiable with me. I'm pretty sure he's referring to Linus's personal swimming pool at his new mansion-sized home that has its own personal theater. I'm 90% sure that is what he's just referred to is he needs to find the money so that Linus can water cool his own personal service system with his own personal swimming pool in his new mansion sized personal theater home. Not the best fucking example to use as to why you need to find sponsorships and punch, punch videos out, right? Jesus Christ, man. Ownership or the business team on sponsored content is we need to maintain control of the creative. I was on a call with a potential partner recently. Wow. They asked for a cream puff piece. What's a cream puff piece? That's when they're like, how much money do we have to give you just so that you tell the story that we want? Before I can jump in and say anything, just because I'm notebook. in shock at this point in time, Nick turns over and says, no, absolutely not. I started laughing a little bit and I just said, hey, Nick, there was probably a more, um, a better way to handle that um, where we could just uh, soften up a little bit. But the truth is, I don't disagree with them. We've had many rocky periods of sponsors where they're not happy with the content or the conclusions and because they couldn't affect the editorial bents. This has and continues to have significant negative impacts on revenue. I think we're pretty transparent on how, where, and why we make our money. And one of our strategic pillars is to make sure that we can maintain editorial independence. So this has included like multiple occasions saying that section. goodbye and good luck to sponsors ranging from thousands of dollars a year to hundreds of thousands of dollars oh. a year over remaining independent and doing right by the LTT community. Oh, that's really While sad. we were deciding if we were a good fit for each other, <laughs> I was very pleased to see the integrity of the team here based on the deals that these guys have walked away from. I think one thing that we've done a poor job of, however, is publishing these standards where a community can see them. That's something I'll be improving upon. And so will I. I'm Colton, the head of business development, which includes departments like HR, procurement, logistics, events, and sales uh -oh. and marketing. Sponsorships specifically are an area where Linus has more limited oversight than he used to. And in my opinion, Why we, we haven't done a great job this? conveying that. It's up to my team to vet incoming sponsor requests and deal with issues that you, our viewers, have with our brand partners. One way we do that is using our LMG sponsor discussion sub forum on LinusTechTips.com to create a dialogue between our business team and the community. It's obvious from some of the issues we're seeing that we need to be more communicative when we're actively Who working. Who cares with about your sponsors? Issues. What are Most you talking about? Most content creators can attest to the fact that brands sometimes take forever to respond to messages or address problems. Is, a perfect example. Wait, is this going to be an indirect blow to Billet Labs? There's no fucking way this is going to be like an indirect. Sometimes they take ages to respond and do all this. Is this what this going to be?
I mean, I have no idea. Ethics and sponsorships. Oh, they've called it the ethics and sponsorships section. Uh, okay. Is Anchor not removing Linus Tech Tips from their Amazon pages, even though we've been asking to be removed since our partnership with them ended months ago? We work hard to push for accountability, but we also understand that these businesses are either large with lots of moving parts or small with limited resources. So things can take time, but you shouldn't be waiting in the dark. It's critical for us to get the sponsorship piece right because real talk, you guys are the boss. If you're not happy with brands we work with, you won't engage with our sponsors and suddenly we won't be able to support all the cool stuff we're currently able to do. Okay. Moving forward then, you can expect weekly updates in the sub forum on issues that need addressing. And we'll also include an up-to-date list of product verticals that are off limits for our channels. We hope this will enable us to make better calls consistently from here on out all while maintaining our long-time commitment to transparency. I think he's trying to say we won't take sponsorships from shitty companies. <laughs> what? Why do we care? <laughs> okay. Like, that's a very normal thing to do. Like, I think that's it. It's like, you hold us accountable. If we get sponsored by fucking uh, Cody2012, then let us know that's a bad thing. All right, I guess. Let's see. Finally, I want to apologize to Billet Labs for auctioning off their monoblock at LTX 2023. Our processes failed when I was selecting items to include in the charity auction, but then it was compounded because when the issue was brought up to me via email, even though I replied two hours later apologizing and offering to pay for the component, I forgot to actually include our contact in that email. <laughs> How is that even possible when you're replying to an email from that person? Uh, fucking hell. Uh, uh, oh, I can't. I can't, man. I can't. Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, leaked price? Oh, I missed it. I, I, I was too overwhelmed. Uh, where was it? brought up to me via email even though i replied to uh so the part of this question uh please shoot over an advice two hours later price. apologizing and offering to pay for the component i forgot to actually include our contact in that email so it went to our procurement team instead of billet labs side note that same team god bless them didn't ask our event team who won the silent auction items and proceeded to email everyone asking what was the value i don't think we, we need don't to need the video. Did anybody see it? certainly 2K? not for tax purposes i clearly need to spend some of my week training the team unless i actually get fired for real this time moving forward we'll be implementing a more rigid process for separating items that need to go back and which ones we'll be holding on to for future testing this might ring a little hollow coming from one half of the WAN show team. That no, this guy I love. And I imagine this guy is like motherfucker. Like his immediate reaction when he heard about this shit was like, why didn't you retest it? Like I am on board with Luke a whole fucking way. He was like, Jesus Christ, dude. Why? Why is this happening? Are you fucking kidding me? Brought you trust me, bro. in the privateering incident among others but we need to be better about our communication. Now I have no intention to like kill the silly humor or be less open with people. I don't want anything to be less fun, but we do need to be respectful and conscious of the impact of our words. I totally we be believe proud this of guy. the work that we do, but we shouldn't negatively compare ourselves to our fellow tech reviewers. Fucking when right, Luke. That's the shit, dude. That's why you are the tits. No, we shouldn't be talking about our competitors in a derogatory fucking way. Absolutely not. Who the fuck said that? And you know that he has to do it this way in front of PR, but behind the scenes he was like, what the fuck? Why would you say that about Steve? We're friends with Steve. Why are you fucking uttering those words? Why is that coming out of your fucking mouth? Who the fuck are you? Right? I've been here since the fucking beginning. I'm friends with that guy. And you're going to sit on camera and badmouth them? Fuck you, man. Yeah! Get him, Luke! We need to apologize. We need to respect people's time and their money. I said after the last round of this that you don't win by screaming loudly or dramaing hard. You win by fixing problems, improving, and becoming a hard target. We're still f***ing up a lot, and we need to own that, fix it, and move on. Not be defensive or shirk blame. That being said, 
I'm not really on the production side of things these days. What my teams and I are working hard on is to support the other teams in other ways. Reintegrating it to LMG has been somewhat terrifying. One of my team's jobs is to take over management of the infrastructure. And while I have brought an experienced team member into the fold, Jesus. it needs a lot of work. So far, we've mostly <laughs> just been focused on documenting what we even have. And most of our initial steps beyond that will be improving overall stability rather than flash you. Oh, why do you think he went downhill there? That's because he went and managed float plane, I think. And now he's been brought back to manage integration. And he, I thought, well, I'm, maybe I'm being biased here, but it sounds like he's saying he walked back into a shitstorm. That's what it looks like to me. It's like I was taken away from LTT. I literally worked at a separate company. Uh, and now I've come back to sort this out. And I've just walked into like, what the fuck is this? Like, why is this? Why is everything fucked? That's what he said, right? He just walked back in. He's like, we, we can't even, we're just documenting what's going on. I don't know. I might be biased because I like the dude, but uh, that's what I'm getting from this is he went away. Now he's been brought back and he just said they had to reintegrate with LTT and it's just a shithole. Projects, any production interruptions due to shoddy infrastructure add additional burden to the other teams. And our goal is- Yeah, maybe. Maybe I'm putting too much faith in him. We will also continue to maintain and develop our Cringe. inventory system, which with better processes should be able to help keep things like Billet's prototype from being mishandled, misplaced, and misused in the future. And the foundational work we're doing on reliable data management and storage should enable teams like the editors and the engineering folks in the lab to move faster and more confidently with lower risk of errors, thanks to new tools like our specs database. Among my other unmentioned and unrelated responsibilities is keeping Linus from driving off various cliffs, which I have failed at a number of times. And let's face it, he's oh, going to fail it? again. Hey, it's me. I'm chief vision officer now, but realistically, I'm not going to be able to hide behind my recent demotion here. I was the one at the head of the company for each and every mistake that our community has rightly brought to our attention. And once again, I made things worse by allowing myself to respond emotionally. It's honestly really hard when people take an internal process error and then they run that all the way to Linus is a thief and wants to auction someone else's intellectual property to the highest bidder or accuses me of trying to brush something under the rug just because I do think it's important to get all the details before declaring me to be a low-down liar, straight-up piece of Oh, don't make it about we you, man. We were slow shipping back the GPU that Billet Lab sent us. There's no way around it. That's our bad. But the delay in communication, the one that prompted the post that you guys just saw, it was less than two business days. The second that I was made aware of the situation, on the 14th, I emailed Billet Labs and I explained what happened. I even included Colton's attempt at apologizing and offering no questions asked, full compensation for their stated value of the product. Yeah, but they said it Which was happened agreed. on the 10th, and it before happened. we were under any pressure to do so, and without Colton even bothering to check with me or Yvonne before just saying, go for it. He knows that our internal policy is to do the right thing. So he tried, bless him. I guess his job is safe for another day. And I, I sorry, I guess I've actually gotten a little bit emotional here again. So I'm going to stop there. Um, because whatever's being said about me and whatever's being said about the team should never have allowed my feelings to distract from any valid criticism of our work. My decision, for example, to not bother retesting the monoblock, that was obviously wrong, and my lame response on the forum was a huge and unnecessary blunder. I owe you guys better, and I'm sorry. For my part, first, I'm going to be working through the other members of the exec team for any crisis communication moving forward. And second, I'm going to spend my week working with the other teams to develop a system of processes that will help our company fulfill my vision of being a world-class tech media organization. I'm also going to be spending my week just refocusing, guys, on what matters most, which is bringing you guys the best damn content that we can make. It's been over 10 years. Good Lord, it's been almost 15. Oh. Um, but I still love tech. What a cringe I fiesta. love my team. And even though our relationship's a little rocky right now, I love this community and everything that it stands for. None of that has changed and none of it is going to. During my interview, one line from line. That was awful, wasn't it?
that was like all about him. I feel bad. People are being mean to me. Like, that was terrible. Uh, you're, like, I, I'm going to cry. I'm really sad. Like, people are being, like, like, two days and you're calling me a thief. Like, I don't know, man. That, that, that's his only contribution to it as well. Uh, yeah, he felt like symp asking for sympathy. That's what that came across as. I want sympathy. Like, that's not what the response needs to be, at least in my opinion. It's like, I'm not going to ask for sympathy. I fucked up. I had to get it sorted. That stood out to me was, I need somebody to come in who I know will be respectful of my life's work. And that's one of the gravity of who is asking for Don and me for the first time. I'm by no means an influencer or a social media guy, but suddenly I am accountable not only to Linus and Yvonne, and the entire staff at LMG. He always jokes about but firing Cole. Most importantly, joke. to the entire LMG audience. There should have been no jokes. I'm fortunate to be inheriting a wonderful team that is passionate and has a ton of energy who shares the same goal. We celebrate our wins together, and when we make mistakes, we also share the responsibility. I'll be coaching the team on the kinds of deep state corporate stuff that I think I'm reasonably good at. Budgeting, team building, relationship management, business development, operational processes. Okay. All things I consider to be essential life skills rather than the tactics of some sort of weird Illuminati conspiracy. We need to be a more well-oiled machine <laughs> with better accountability as we've gotten more complicated internally with how technical, what? writing, editing teams all have to coordinate. There are still going to be deadlines, due dates, and time limited goals that we still need to drive towards, but the how of all this obviously needs more polish. I planned these topics to be covered in internal conversations over the coming weeks, but instead I'm talking to you about it during this on-the-job experience of what it's like to work at a YouTube company. For all our warts, the team has worked hard to build up trust in the community and share the joy and the passion that we all have for tech. So I do not take for granted the responsibility and stewardship that comes along with this position. And I welcome continued constructive feedback. Thank you for all for holding us accountable. I feel ready for the challenge and ready for this message from our sponsor. <laughs> Just kidding, again. Stop! It's not funny, like, at all. Like, this is, who is this for? Holy shit. I, I don't know. Like, are they trying to make it lighthearted? It's like no one's feeling lighthearted about this at all. They feel like you maliciously destroyed a company. Are you, like, missing what people are thinking about you right now? Regardless of, like, oh, it was just an internal miscommunication. Yeah, whatever. Like, no one gives a fuck. Like, your audience is looking at you at, like, covering up scandals and abuse of your staff. Like, what the hell? Holy Jesus Christ. <clears throat> uh, uh, this is screwing. Like, uh, talking about the sponsors and stuff, like, so, again, off tone. It's like they, I, I, I get the feeling they don't really get what the problem is. It's weird, even though it's being screamed at them. That's crazy. It's just a small oopsie. It might be. Like, yeah, I'm not talking about the Madison stuff, obviously. But, like, the, 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 the stuff with the thing, yeah, it might be an internal oopsie. But you can't treat it as, like, a joke. Right? Yeah, I'm sure with a staff of literally, like, hundreds of people, like, there's going to be some fuck-up somewhere. Obviously, that's going to happen. But you can't treat it like a joke. That's no fucking good. Like, that's not going to happen. <laughs> that's, that's garbage. Finish the last second. Can we even make it the last two seconds? But Dbrand did offer. I think Luke put it best at the Rosa Fear. Uh, please take out the lttstore.com plug and sponsor jokes before uploading to YouTube. It's cringe to do these jokes in a serious video. We're still us. We have an equal number of people complaining if this was a completely careful corporate response. No. There's a difference between like a serious toned video and one that has like sponsor and store mentions. There's a middle ground. It's not one or the other, right? You don't need sad piano music, black and white and tears, or we have it like full of 69 jokes and sponsors. Like that's not how it works at all, ever. No, uh, we won't be able to make everyone perfectly happy. So what we're going to do is be ourselves. The best version of ourselves. We've passed this. Nick wanted to do the LTT store thing. It broke the tension while we we're having tough conversations about accountability. Uh, the best path forward. Is a little humor a bad thing? Honest question. Yeah, like in the wrong place. Yeah. Absolutely is. <laughs> Gotta read the room. 
Yeah, a little humor is inappropriate in certain scenarios. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we have a preview of the Linus apology. <laughs> the ukulele's out. Oh, big place. Uh, making it happen. I can't imagine this has been taking well by the community. Like, I really can't. Let's go to Reddit real quick. See what's going on there. I've got, like, more Reddit threads open than ever. Uh, monetized video. Fucking sponsor jokes. This video screams. We're all we're sorry we got caught. Also, Luke literally doing a 69 joke while Madison posted our allegations a couple of hours ago. Tone deaf. Uh, so the people DMing me how a 69 joke is related to the Madison situation. All I'm saying is that you definitely shouldn't do sexual innuendo jokes in an apology video while one of your ex-employees just went public with a bunch of accusations, including sexual harassment, etc. <clears throat> uh, yeah. But then again, they can put it through the YouTube trimmer. In like two or three days, that stuff will be gone. But I'm not taking it down. No way, because like that's not happening. Uh, the PRT legal counsel should be fired for allowing them to post this after Madison's tweets. Monetized video. Why do a sponsor throw? Why have Linus get emotional when his eyes are following a prompter? Why do an LTT store throw? Yeah, that all that stuff has not worked. Like, Jesus Christ. A company that has this much experience making videos for people should know that this is the wrong time to be doing that kind of stuff. Even if you guys think it breaks the tension internally, you shouldn't do it. Uh... Yeah. You think it's lost a lot of veterans? I don't think they'll be hit that hard. I really don't. I uh, I think they are in that situation where they're too big to fail, uh, ultimately. As, like I said, there are people who've done far, far, far more egregious things than this who still carry audiences wherever they go. I don't think it'll be that thing. But it's a lesson, at least to me personally, of like a, just a comedy of fuck-ups from start to finish uh, and resolving things. How tone deaf do you need to be? Yeah, nobody is like the sponsor thing. Uh, I can't wait about it. I'm sorry we destroyed your startup shit. <laughs> well, what happens tomorrow is the question, right? Uh, Blizzard's, people said Blizzard's still too big to fail. Blizzard's still going. They're fine. Uh, Elgin Paul still has a career. Correct. Yeah, like, I don't think it's... Uh, I don't think, I, I'm not expecting the downfall of LTT here. I don't think that's even remotely possible uh, at this point. Certainly not with this, but it's just... Errors upon errors upon errors upon errors upon errors. Errors upon errors. Just, like, laughably bad errors. I, 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 I can't even figure out the email thing. That fa- feels like a lie to me. Like, you're replying to somebody who's emailed you about this thing. And you had multiple people listed in the reply. So how the fuck do you miss out the guy you're replying to? Like, I don't even know how... It feels like you'd have to go around the houses to even make that happen. Like, you would have to reply and send it, forward it to someone else, then reply it to someone else and do it all individually. Like, it's... Reply reply all is hard. Unless they're sending these emails off to a variety of people. Scapegoat? It just feels like bullshit, right? It, that's what it feels like. Like, you have the email from the person that you're replying to, and you can't include them in it. Uh, all of this because of a throw to GM to an LTT employee is wild. It's actually not that wild, in my opinion. A lot of these internet downfalls that happen usually start with something relatively small. Uh, and then it just f- fucking explodes. Like, something, whatever is that k- straw, literally, that breaks the camel's back is usually... S- like, sometimes it's major, sometimes it's not. But not as big as, like, when it actually erupts. And everybody's like, oh, yeah, and this. Oh, yeah, and this. Oh, yeah, and this. Uh, and Because there are so many people who are dealing with these people and are fearful of getting retaliation that they don't say anything and then it just all explodes into this and it's sad that it's a friendship that kind of broke up right i mean i've no doubt i I wouldn't be surprised to see ltt and games nexus work together again in the future uh at some point but like to see to see it break down that way this roast aged wonderfully i don't know what costs less your sandals or your integrity <laughs> uh, oh sweet jesus well for all we know again i'm not in the tech space i don't have a beside the scenes do you think in the tech youtube space ltt is hated but everybody played nice because they were so big because there's a lot of that in youtube right there's a lot of people who are so fucking big that like 
yeah like we'll work together because probably it's good for my business but you are a fucking asshole and i absolutely want nothing to do with you at all uh and they're they i don't think it i would i would estimate it's not hated but i wonder if there has been some feeling for a while as somebody who doesn't follow the tech side of it yeah they didn't even apologize no um like when these uh i can imagine certainly smaller channels who work really really hard to get everything right so they can be considered legitimate and professional and then they see ltt posting mis misinformation all the time and gaining millions of views for videos that seemingly take less effort or whatever are just like completely angry and pissed off about it um <clears throat> uh they lost the brand and everything they were a big something yeah 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 not hey but more like yeah it's mainstream stuff i mean i said this yesterday is i always look at ltt as entertainment stuff not tech stuff like if i'm seriously thankfully I, I don't have to do it much anymore but when i was like building my own pcs i would go to gamers nexus for like which graphics card should i buy if i'm gonna buy like i did it for my 2080 ti uh when i went by 2080 ti i didn't go to ltt i went to uh i went over there LT, ltt had done videos on it but i'm not gonna watch that for that recommendation yeah exactly i'm with you clutch uh that's that's what i went with they aren't that entertaining for tech stuff they're pretty entertaining like i think so anyway like for tech stuff uh they're pretty entertaining i don't give a shit about like i bought a hundred pieces of crap off amazon which one is not crap like all, all of it right <laughs> like that's the point it's crap on amazon uh we bought the shittest stuff you can buy off Newegg or whatever uh to make it work <laughs> oh no never a video for numbers I did sell it, auctioned it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, that post, yeah. The plot thickens. Like, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah, I enjoy jank water cooling stuff. No, it's not practical, but I, I find it kind of fun. I even like seeing them set up Linus's house. Like, sure, why not? Like, if I could get a sponsor to sort my house out, yeah, I'd fucking make that video. I'm no fucking saint. I'm not going to sit here and, like, pretend that I'm not right of course yeah you're gonna pay me money to also upgrade my house in some way yeah i'm totally gonna do that like a hundred percent why the fuck wouldn't i do that <laughs> i'd absolutely do that i fucked newegg i think i could take a short man in fucking sandals oh my god uh yeah i mean we're doing a summerthon for the office right we're totally doing that we've got a lot of money to pay out to rebuild that place uh and we're gonna do a summerthon for it that's that's absolutely what we're doing our worst week in years <laughs> worst week so far oh jesus christ <sighs> man <clears throat> it's joff Velger, you can let me know so they've uh, so they managed to find who got the water block uh i guess he doesn't want it holy shit dude what a day anyway i do need to do something in wow i think that's the, the unless something's developed in the last few goddamn minutes i think we're up to date 